Hello and welcome to another edition of the Stench of Truth. In very interesting news today, David Petraeus resigned as the head of the CIA, uh, claiming that he had an extramarital affair and citing that as the reason for his res resignation. Of course, Obama has accepted and he's going to be stepping down. So now the question is, who's going to be the next guy? But of course, uh, there is much more to this story than meets the eye. I believe that Petraeus is... Uh, part of the fallout that we are going to expect as a result of Romney not winning the election. Of course, um, uh, I have talked about the Mormon influence in the financial sector, and uh, Webster Tarpley has commented in his book, Just Too Weird, about uh, Romney and his uh, Mormon background, uh, about a Mormon mafia that is contained within the FBI and CIA, and that this is in fact a rogue faction of the U.S. intelligence apparatus, and that uh, it may have had some hand in what happened on 9-11. <coughs> and I believe that Petraeus' fallout here is, uh, is a direct result of Romney's not being re-elected. Uh, now this may have something to do with the CIA stand-down order that uh, went out to the CIA substation that was located uh, close by uh, the ambassador uh, in Libya. Uh, during uh, the unfortunate events that led to the deaths of uh, four Americans there. And uh, it may be that the Mormon mafia that is contained within the uh, FBI and CIA were the ones that engineered this in order to um, give Obama a black eye and uh, give Romney some r momentum in order to become president. But in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to looking at this from a Mormon perspective, one has to take into account the Mormon oath of vengeance. And it is my belief that, that not only is there a Mormon mafia within the FBI and CIA, but also that there is a very strong uh, Mormon component uh, in the financial industries as well. And uh, Bain Capital is a perfect example. And you could go back to uh, my blog post, Lo Did I Spy the Danites and Willard Did Lead Them, which is at tenebrous t dash the stench of truth dot blogspot dot com. And, there, the, and you can access that from my website, which is, uh, which is below in the description box. Uh, and that is the stench of truth dot com, where, where you can get hooked up with me everywhere. Uh, both uh, you know, social networking, Twitter, Facebook, also my blogs. Uh, but anyway, when I talked about uh, uh, Mitt Romney in that post and his Mormon background, it's quite obvious that uh, Bain Capital was a direct derivative of uh, the Hughes financial empire, which was heavily infiltrated by Mormons. And uh, what I believe is going on now, and what I believe that we have to prepare for, is a uh, Mormon vengeance attack against the United States and the American people. And I believe that David Petraeus' resignation is part of the fallout that one would expect from this. Now, uh, on first look, I haven't had time to really delve into this uh, very deeply. On first look, it appears to me that Petraeus represents a faction that is on the outs. Uh, he is clearly not a part of Obama's Wall Street clique. And uh, whatever Wall Street clique Obama is a part of, it certainly includes Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, as far as who else is involved in that, I don't know. Um, uh, but certainly there, it represents a faction within Wall Street. And uh, Petraeus is probably part of another faction. Uh, not allied with Obama. Now, I don't know whether he is part of the Mormon coalition. Uh, it may be that he is, and that he is removing himself from the picture in order to preserve something for his future, uh, to give him a cushy job in the corporate sector, or uh, to preserve some political ploy in the future, uh, such as running for president or something like this, so that he can quietly move aside with this concocted, and I think it's completely concocted, extramarital affair, uh, using it as an example. Certainly a, uh, not, a, not necessarily a career-ending move by any means. Uh, it certainly would not have the kind of devastating impact on his future as would a tremendous scandal. 
And uh, of course, uh, if Benghazi turns out to be something that can be laid at the feet of the CIA, he is going to take some blame for that, I'm sure. But uh, that remains to be seen. So uh, what I fear is going to happen now is that we are going to have a, a Mormon backlash against the United States and the American people uh, because they have rejected Mitt Romney for president and because Mitt Romney was seen by many, if not all, of the Mormon faithful as the fulfillment of Joseph Smith's white horse prophecy. And uh, I would urge you all to look that up if you are unfamiliar with it. And because the U.S. has rejected him, uh, it seems to me that the oath of vengeance would come into play. And that will surface on two fronts. It will both be within the bureaucratic makeup of the federal government itself, via the Mormon factions within the CIA and FBI, Benghazi being a precursor to this, uh, also, it will be within the financial sector as well, because the Mormon influence there is readily apparent, uh, not only uh, through Bain Capital, but also through other subsidiary organizations of the Hughes Empire and the other uh, companies, corporations, and uh, banks, and what have you, that ultimately were the beneficiaries of the people who came out of that. And uh, this is what I fear is going to happen. We are going to see a significant financial assault uh, perpetrated by these people as well as things that have to do with foreign affairs or terrorism. And uh, this is a genuine fear that I have and I think that uh, this is something that bears looking at and bears keeping a close eye on because this could be truly devastating for the United States, especially in as much as we are in a very precarious position already where Obama is ready to uh, you know, fall on his sword already and stab all of his uh, supporters in the back by going after social programs, the, uh, the bar has been moved further to the right by this election as well. And his uh, pre-compromise position, that is the sellout that he is going to offer the Republicans, is not going to be nearly far enough to the right to satisfy them. And, of course, that sets up uh, all kinds of problems for any kind of resolution of the so-called fiscal cliff that's coming up as well. So there are many things at play here, and this is a very dangerous time. And I believe that we need to keep our eyes open and we need to look at this uh, with very sound mind and try to come up with a... Uh, a um, a plan of attack. One of the things that I noted in my last video was the United Front Against Austerity, which is a way to uh, approach this from an economic rights point of view when it comes to the government. But what can we do on the business side of things? We need to watch very closely what kind of transactions are being handled, what kind of major moves are being done within the financial industry. And we also need to be very aware and very keen to look at any terrorist attacks, any um, any, uh, you know, saber rattling that uh, moves more into the actuality realm uh, in order to see if any of these uh, dire predictions come true. And uh, sadly, I think this is where we're headed. I think we're going to see a Mormon vengeance attack against the United States via those two vectors. So um, I urge you all to keep your eyes open and look out for these types of things and do some digging into Petraeus' background and also uh, look into this Mormon Mafia angle both within the government and within the financial sector and uh, hopefully we will be prepared to uh, weather the storm that is coming. But have no fear, the storm is coming. Obama is going to sell you out, but his sellout is not going to be destructive enough to satisfy the rabid absolutely reactionary right-wing ideologues that completely control and dominate uh, the Congress right now and uh, various other government agencies. And of course, I believe the uh, Mormon Mafia is heavily uh, to the right, is very ultra-conservative, uh, and they support this type of, of thing. And of course, uh, the John Birch Society, also uh, very far right-wing uh, sort of originator of a lot of this uh, <clears throat> rhetoric that surrounds Obama about him being a closet socialist and all this other kind of nonsense, which of course, you know, all you have to do is look at his four years in office. As much as the uh, reactionary right want to tell you that Obama has given away the store and socialist uh, paradise to everybody uh, under the sun, nothing could be further from the truth. And 
Uh, if you look at his uh, f first term in office, you can see quite clearly that he is a Wall Street Democrat and everything that he has done has been for the benefit of Wall Street. And it has been to the detriment of everybody else. And uh, that is going to continue. And sadly, uh, if Obama had any kind of decency, if he was working for a faction that just wanted to scrape away as much as they could get without crippling anything, um, I think that time has passed, and now we're going to move into the crippling phase. And the people who run the factions that are out to denude everything of every living thing and every scrap of money or any kind of asset whatsoever and leave a crippling, crushing wake of destruction and devastation in their, in their passage, those are the people that are calling the shots now on the right, and uh, those are the people that Obama is going to have to work with in some kind of governmental capacity, and that is what's going to cause this uh, grand bargain to be a much worse and much more bitter pill to swallow for the vast majority of us who are not ultra-rich, ultra-wealthy uh, heads of banks and heads of multinational corporations who are going to be the ones that benefit in all of this in any case because many of these organizations are going to be owned in whole or in part by the Mormons, but of course you're not going to know that because they are very secretive about uh, their holdings. So these are words of caution and warning to you, and I think that, uh, General Petraeus's uh, resignation is one in a long series of events that we're going to see happen uh, as the pinball makes its way around uh, the flippers and paddles and what have you until uh, we finally have a resolution of the coming crisis. But we are entering a very dangerous phase here, people, and I think it is very important that everybody keep their eyes open and keep their ears open and watch everything that is happening to try and stay one step ahead of the avalanche that is about to fall on us. Thank you. Good night.